Okay. Okay. Let me go ahead and pull up the, I've got two I want to talk about. Let me pull up the first of two. <clears throat> Okay, uh, this is the, the first one. Um, this would be the second in the series of what I've got. The first one would be that series of clouds of challenges. Then I, mm -hmm. I'm jumping from that into this. Uh, this content comes from one of the presentations we made at the 2021 uh, conference that I pulled out some of the key things as the requirements. Yeah. Uh, I, I pretty much dumped them there as requirements. Um, I'm not 100% confident that I'm, that I'm laying a good enough foundation. Again, it's kind of like in the foundation, if here's what we need after the challenges, and they have to circle back later to it, or if I'm dumping too much as critical that people aren't going to understand at this point, or if it just can stand alone until reinforced with the message later. Mm -hmm. Okay, and again, the, the organization there is similar to what we had uh, a little over a year ago with a few wording changes here and there and kind of organize it a bit to fit on one page. Mm -hmm. Okay, okay, and then it kind of goes down through the, and then what I'm trying to do at the end of each of these is to give some type of kicker box that's somewhat of a summary or questions that lead that lead the reflection into the next next step. Okay, we'll just start at the top of the page and uh, okay, and go through it. Okay. Okay, and, and part of what gets here, I'm, I'm laying the foundation for a futocracy. Yeah. And I'm kind of jumping right into key parts of it as an introduction. And then without, without really saying that this is futocracy at this point, it's just kind of like, this is what we need for these reasons. Okay. Um, I mean, the word agility, you know, me, I don't, don't like that word. Um, um, well, okay. It gets so confused with other forms of what agile means. Okay. Uh, should I go ahead and just leave it as responsiveness only? The, re the reason I use it agility is that, uh, again, it is somewhat of a fad word that catches people's attention, even though it's somewhat ambiguous what it means nowadays. Okay. Hi, John. See, at, at this, good, good morning. Um, good morning. At, at this at this level, though, yeah. it's still somewhat of a foundation. I don't know. Uh, like I said, I, 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 yeah, yeah, I, I, in the context you're describing it, it seems okay. okay. But it's not a word that yeah. we use because of its confusion as a word. Yeah. Um, I, I, I understand that I'm thinking of leaving it here again. This is, this is the second in the series, part of the introduction. Mm -hmm. Let it, let it mean whatever the reader thinks it means at this point. And then we could yeah. Pro yeah. And then probably avoid using it later on. I think so, because otherwise we get bogged down in the definition of agile and agility and uh, uh, yeah, the responsiveness is fairly self-explanatory, I think. Okay. Okay, then I tried to bring in the customer facing issue, but I also introduced not only as an external customer, but also the internal relationship. Yeah, which is crucial, yeah. And that, that addresses the, the silo issue. Yeah. The line of sight that gets uh, somewhat ties into purpose at that point again. Okay, I mean, I don't know whether it's too early or not for this slide, but job activity is uh, industrial aged HR uh, as opposed to task activity. Okay, okay, all right, that, that's easy. Okay. Okay. I think that's important because people may say, well, 
it's within my job. But if you focus on the task, then they start to look at, well, this could be done differently. Okay, okay. So l l let me put it there. It's close enough to job that people would understand it without needing more explanation. And then we could use that yeah. same consistent terminology later. Yeah. Now, because you've shown internal and external customers, right? the direct lines of communication, is it just cross-organization or is it with full transparency? Or just with transparency? Yeah. It's, it's just a question. I mean, the degree of transparency with externals, of course, will be... Yeah different to internals but the more you're transparent with okay. the externals yeah. the better the relationship becomes yeah right <clears throat> let me go ahead i'm putting full in there it's not necessary but it begs for some more words on that line i'm trying to think what would be more appropriate than full i'm sorry where are you at I, I'm, I'm just looking at the full um you, you couldn't say absolute could you i mean uh, that's too because uh, that, that that you're talking about absolute transparency yeah uh i think that goes almost too far yeah, yeah. Hmm. And, and again when you get into transparency it's more of an intention than an ability because some things Have you cannot be. reveal until their time just because of uh, legal or timing issues. Yeah, and there's IPR issues and all sorts. That's why I full I struggle with. Um, Could you say complete? Or just leave just leave it alone. Or just full with, with transparency. Yeah, I would have just left with transparency. Okay. Just sidestep the issue. Okay. Ready for the next box? Yeah. Okay. Then the autonomy. Um, Is it in consultation? Because that also makes it seem as though that's a requirement, whereas collaboration, yeah. I think, is more open. This gets back to, I think, some of the word changes we've used since then. Yeah, absolutely. We, yeah. I mean, the models yeah. matured more. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, the risk if loss is affordable, that's a classic effectuation. Right. Uh, and I actually, I actually cleaned that wording up from what we used last year. Okay. Adriana, any comments on that box? No, that's good. Yeah. Okay. The third box and gets into the alignment. Okay. Um, okay. The the pictures fit okay. Yeah. yeah. Okay. I mean the 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 cross hands is used by so many. It's getting a bit uh, overused, but um, I like the cat. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, I know the, the the cross hands you see, but again, it it seems to kind of fit though too. Oh. Yeah, I'm, okay. I'm not criticizing. I'm just saying it's, okay, yeah. been, it's used for so many things. Okay. Uh, third box in is uh, cross org linkages alignment. Talk me through the address boundary conflicts. That gets into the, the problem of silos. It also gets into the line of sight uh, alignment issue, and that uh, yeah, boundary here may be out of date because uh, it's using the old vision of here's my job, that's your job. Yeah. yeah. 
but at the same time, okay, how do I how do I back into or support the alignment issue when it comes to who does what other other than just clarify decision rights or or just or just address 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 conflicts. I guess I'm I'm trying to link it with the autonomy one because if it's about distributed decision making and collaboration, then the number of conflicts should be far less. Right. So I would address causes of conflicts. Uh or it, it, it's something that conflict should be minimal. Right. And they should be productive. Right. Which when you read a lot of management uh, writing, they want to address the conflicts because they think that some, that's the primary purpose of the top management structure is to address conflicts without realizing why conflicts occur. Yeah. And so what it does, it creates cold conflicts on the negative side because they're not addressed. Right. right. And on the positive side, they're avoided. And so you don't get the innovation and the productivity that you're looking for. Right. I would this is now just thinking it through, use conflicts in a positive way. Some, something around there, some words around there. Positive use of conflicts or we'll use conflicts as opportunities. Is that getting closer to what you're thinking? Yeah, is it, clar is it clarifying decision rights here? Because we've already said right. that it's distributed. So it's conflicts as opportunities to create. It's, it's something around creating or being more creative and innovative. So, so it's conflicts as opportunities to be creative and innovative. I'm not following. Back, back up, back up, back up, and start again on conflicts. Yeah, I'm trying to think of it in, within the heading of alignment, because if we're having cross-organizational links, right, then part of the history of that was negative and cold conflicts, right. Whereas the positive side of those links is to use conflicts as opportunities for creativity and innovation. Because this is what's getting lost. If you're sticking in your silos and you're fighting over your territory, you're not using that energy for the creativity and innovation that organizations are desperate for. Is that capturing what you're talking about? Yeah, I mean, it, it's a better use, I think. Okay. Um. So if we now got distributed decision making, I 
and the cross organizational linkages is now the, is the decisions are taking into account the needs of others, the needs, interests, concerns, and expectations. And, and so the clarification shouldn't be needed if you've got distributed decision making. It's what it means in cross organizational linkages. Maybe instead of clarify, it should be clear cross organization decisions. Does that make more sense? We're getting closer. Yeah. The, the word clear, it, yeah. It, from my perspective, um, I don't know if it, if it, I know what you're trying to say, but I don't know if it says it enough. Th throw some other words at us. Like distinctive or um, well-defined, is that? Uh, is that kind of uh -huh. what we're going for with clear? My rationale behind clear is many decisions are made in the silos without people even knowing about them, let alone understanding why they're made. And they tend to be made for the silo, not the whole organization. And, and so if we're having improved cross organizational linkages, this alignment, then the decisions are much clearer to the organization. And also the other side of the clear is that it is really understandable why those decisions are being made. So it's a sort of a two pronged thing in my use of the word clear here. But if it doesn't mean that to others, then it's no good meaning that to me. <laughs> okay, should I bring it back around to principle-based decisions? Uh, I mean, it, it is a truism. They are principle based. It's cross They Right now, of the two, I probably prefer the principle based over the clear org, cross org. Yeah, whichever you prefer, um, that's the, the idea of discussing. Well, I'll say I'm duplicating the principle-based guidelines for action up there though too. Well, yeah, I mean, you've got distributed decision-making and principle-based guidelines for action, okay. so. Um, is this even needed at this point? Right now is 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 too duplicated. It depends what you're trying to achieve with your cross org linkages. Um, Are we following the same logic at each box? Go to the top box again. So. <coughs> so that's all about being quick and whatever right. appropriate response. This is about decision-making and autonomy. And this is about alignment. Alignment then is an outcome at the moment of those two. Right. And the outcome is conflict stars opportunities. I come back to my clarity of decision making. Um, it doesn't have to be tight and perfect at this point either. Yeah, no. Because yeah. it's an introductory slide, it's not a summary. Yeah. 
Okay, leave it then as principle-based decisions. Um, talk me through the minimal structure one. What is your reason for direct communication? Um, it basically gets to the idea that a network is the shortest line between people who need to be connected and therefore it, it's not only for communication but it's for for any, any reason okay this is this is where i'm kind of backing into the need for network versus hierarchy yeah without so saying then, without saying network i would use the word easier instead of direct okay because direct yeah okay is, yeah, yeah. Oh, but, it might be earlier. <laughs> um, yeah, that, that's the work. Now we've had this discussion about purpose alignment and what alignment means in the past, haven't we? Uh, that will come later, yeah. Um, on the minimum structure for easier communication, would that be better for easier workflow or communication? I mean, it's, it's both, but probably communication more than workflow. Gets down to what, what is work. Yeah. Um, leave it. Leave it. A communication. I'm just trying to measure apples with apples again, and because it's more of the problems come with the communication issues than with workflow itself. Well, yeah. <clears throat> I mean, the structure right. creates poor communication. Right. So. I, I think the structure and easier communication, the two go together quite nicely. Mm -hmm. okay. I'm, I'm just now challenging the integrated purpose alignment one. Um, nowhere else do I address purpose is hinted at elsewhere, but it's not explicit elsewhere. It's in the first box, isn't it? Purpose driven. Right, you're right, 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 is there, right. Um, Okay, just okay. If we if we leave the purpose up there, we got alignment in the third box. Then it somewhat is trying tying the two together, which at this introductory level is not necessary. I'm just trying to think what that means, but in other words. Um, Well, I'm jumping ahead into how we use it. Yeah. Which is a little early at this point. Rather than integrated, maybe, and this then comes back to the first bit as well, common purpose alignment. Because what's different with the purpose alignment in the, all this context to the conventional objectives system, the structures tend to focus on their own objectives, which are some objectives of some other objectives, which eventually may get back to the purpose. What we're working here is a direct relationship with the purpose. Uh, it's not quite right. Uh, 
shared purpose? No. That's better. Okay. Maybe it should be alignment with this then brings us back to it's a common shared purpose then. Right. Otherwise we may have had more than one purpose. Right. Yes, yes. Okay. Do you want the word shared to be italicized? <laughs> mm. I'm not picking. Uh, Just... It's good to be picky. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Because <laughs> if you're not, somebody else will be. <laughs> yeah. okay. Right, somebody who shouldn't be, right? Right. <laughs> Okay. Drop down to the kicker box at the bottom. Yeah, I'm just reading that. Now. Okay. And this sets up. This actually bridges not into the next page, but possibly two pages later. Mm -hmm. And again, what I'm trying to do is set up at the bottom either some reflective questions or a summary that is leading and setting the stage for something that comes immediately or shortly thereafter. I, I'm not going to like me for this one. I, I think capable of routine proactive change is a bit jargony. What we're using though. Uh, uh, yeah. Designing an organization capable of operating in continual change. Because that's the outcome you're trying to achieve, yeah? Whether it's reactive or proactive, it doesn't matter. We've got to be able to cope with it because it's a continuous process. Okay, okay. Because some things will be reacted, as we were saying on, on Tuesday, to, I don't know, a new product or service that you want to bring in. And so there are parts of the organization would need to either be proactive and prepare for that, or if it's needed to be done quickly, they have to react to that and change their way of working quickly. So it'd okay. be a combination of both. Yep. Okay. Uh, this captures what I need. I struggle a little bit with the reliance on disruptive change. All change has some degree of disruption. Uh, yeah. Um, I capture it better. I 
I mean, it captures it. It's it's a bit different, but it captures it. Again, I'm trying to illustrate a a shift in thinking. Yeah. Is it large or major? Um, Just a term. Yeah, major is probably better. Because it could be a small major change. Uh, yes. And I think that box then can be used as a hook for anything. Right. Okay. On to the next one. Okay. What? Yeah, let's, uh, any, any comment? No. Okay, what I'm gonna do with this next is open it up to the wider community and also post it here and there on LinkedIn. Uh, LinkedIn I use for promotional, but every once in a while I get some ideas out there of mm -hmm. minor things that people are seeing that we're not. Yeah. Okay, all right. Let me... Oh, let me see if I can do this here. Okay, did it, did it change to paradox for you? It's the yeah. same. The yeah, same, okay, okay, okay. Didn't know if it was gonna do it or not. It jumped windows, let me, let me change my share. That's the downside. I find it's hard to go from one presentation to another without yeah. well, dropping it out. I had another window open when I tried to open it. It opened the old window instead of opening it was in the window I was in. Yeah. Okay, all right, here we go. Okay. <clears throat> this would follow the other one. And again, the, this, the sequencing here, uh, I keep moving them around because of the, you know, I, I'm being forced into a linear flow and not everything flows linearly. So depending upon how I've, Viewing in, in time, the order shifts around a little bit. Uh, this, this comes from something that I've used for a discussion starter. It also goes back to something I wrote you know, quite a few years ago now, which gets into the paradox of confl conflicting statements that often are, that are coming. Um, what you've got here is the left-hand side two sets of statements that are in contrast to each other. And then on the right-hand side, I kind of break it up into a little bit more of conflicting statements. And again, this is to then lead into, uh, let me see here, give me a second, the flow here. Okay, the flow is it, the, the series of clouds, the challenge we faced, followed by the slide that we just talked about, mm -hmm. followed by this one, which, and this slide in is followed by the uh, reactive proactive. And then that would get into the, the fifth would be a discussion of change in a VUCA world, followed by change in the business model, and that, that kind of lays out the flow of this. But again, the, the sequence here could be moved around easily. Okay. I mean, the left-hand side, um, no issue with any of that. Right, okay, and again, that is setting up conflicting points of view that are commonly encountered. Okay, then, then shift over to the right-hand side, which kind of blows those up a little bit more. Uh, and again, what I'm trying to get here still is the conflicting points of view to end up with, let me see, and then, it ends with four reflective questions mm -hmm. that then that then leads into the 
uh, reactive proactive. Okay, so let, let's go to the top right hand side. Okay. And sorry, um, <laughs> Adriana, have you got anything about the left hand side? No. That all um, that all does happen. <laughs> <laughs> True. <Yeah. laughs> now, I guess when I read the top box, I have to try and put it in the context of the hierarchy controlling the change and driving it. Right. Because the term as a standalone doesn't work for me. But in that context, then it could be true. Because you can still have hierarchical authority. And should, it, should it be hierarchical control? I think control is better than authority because. Okay. Uh, control lays the, the foundation better. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Because it, the authority itself isn't the issue, it's how you use it. It's the power of authority. Um, again, the, the second one, often, when you get into it isn't true because the managers of the different levels do have positional power to act for some reason they feel they are able to act and that's because of the hierarchical control process so i i struggle with they yeah not all of them who see problems don't act and also they do have positional power to act, unless we're saying that you can only get into change if the hierarchical control allows it. Is this a combination of authority to act or fear and or fear to act? Is a combination of both because I don't think the positional power yeah. is lacking. Because you can bring changes in your own team it's a matter for yourselves, provided you do it within the constraints of the organization. Yeah. I mean, that is closer for me to certainly my experience in change and the current work I'm doing as well. Does that read really as, as individuals who see the problems often lack, to, lack authority or fear, like they lack fear, or uh, am I reading too much into it? Or are afraid? Yeah. Yeah. That's better. Mm -hmm. Okay. Because what I find mostly is they have this fantasy of consequences that aren't reality if they do something. And so they have this fear of the consequences, which nine times out of 10, aren't reality either. Right. So that, that for me fits much better. When this is expanded later, we get into perception. Yeah. Um, <laughs> okay. Uh, uh, 
That third box comes from a large part of the text that I, that's in the paper. Yeah. Yeah. And this is linked directly to the silos and the lack of communication and rate and, and, and all the other things, yeah. That last box there gets into walking the talk. Other issues? No, I mean, I, as a standalone, it, yep. it has content, um, which, which is often the case. Yeah. Okay. And then I summarize it with four reflective questions that somewhat tries to summarize this, but also then lays the groundwork for what's to come. Okay. Just one comment, the footnote yep. at the very bottom. Right. We've changed the routine adaptive change, maybe that needs to reflect the earlier changes. Uh, give me a second, give me a second, give me a second. Okay, let me. And that might apply to many of the others. Yeah, well, I, I, that change I have to put everywhere. Yeah. I've been trying not to change that. <laughs> Until I come across. <laughs> yep. uh, okay, you see the original one there? Okay. Yeah. Okay, operating with continuous change. Let's see. Yeah. Let me bump this up a bit more. Okay, um, do I need to lead by everyone at this point? We're gonna drop that. Unless you need it for a specific reason, I don't see it's necessary. Okay, I don't, and I'm trying to keep it to the, to the two lines. Yeah. Okay, yep. I could change that uh, across the board. It's just for continuity. It's not, yeah, I, yeah, I agree. Okay. Make a note on that. Okay. Yep. We haven't gone too far that there's too many spots to change it. Okay. All That's right. A bit earlier than late. Yeah, yes. Okay, anything else on these? No. Nope. Okay. Make sure I get them saved. All right. That's all I had for today on my list. Anything, Reg or Andriana, on your list you want to talk about today? Nope. No, I can talk about the other thing with it off recording. Okay. Okay, uh, 
We're done today then? As far as this is concerned, yeah. yeah. Okay. Uh, Andrea, could you go ahead and excuse yourself then? Reg and I do have sure. one thing we need to talk about in our partnership. Okay, absolutely. Okay. Great, yeah. thank you. And, you know, have a good week and we'll catch you next week. Okay, you guys too. Bye-bye. Right. Bye. Thank you, Joe.